track train and then followed by 1725 and followed of course by the consist it should be 11 cars I had a little bit of camera problems with the uh, previous camera I was using so I started again let's say in a sense now we're in separate cars and uh, this is the very best train in Queensland and I'll talk a little bit more later on as we go we'll, uh, it has, I should say, it has dining lounge and sleeping cars and a couple of city cars. That's a sleeping car, eh? My friend John Boyle's going to be there. I'm going to be in this one here. Good night, some fish. It's going to be this car B. I'll be in a room at. And we look along. It's about a 10 car train. Nice little train. doing here is uh, provisioning the dining car, putting in food, loading food onto the dining car at the moment. Now, there's a bit of a story to tell about this train. This was uh, built up from stainless steel to stainless steel cars built in the 1980s and uh, roomette cars, they converted some of them to twin it, uh, cabins and uh, assembled the train in other words and now uh, um, it is for those who are in my vintage I'm 65 it is a story like the uh, Clint Eastwood movie the good and the bad and the ugly this train is actually the good it's the only sleeping car train in Queensland and the bad and some people would be completely shocked or surprised to hear me say the spirit Queensland it goes from Brisbane to Cairns and it has no sleeping cars and it has rail bed cars. That, then there's the ugly which is the uh, trains of shame, the inlander and the westlander which have no sleepers, no diners, have a sitting car and a little pokey little lounge and snack bar. So they're the kind of trains that I don't ride. There's any train that doesn't have a sleeper or at least a uh, rail bed. managed to get a uh, forward facing roomette berth, a single cabin as you many will know. It's a very small cabin of course, there's the wash basin, well, down below that used to be a toilet in the good old days, and you've got the, the door and so on there, and a uh, mirror and the usual, that little wardrobe and so on, the bed comes down from under behind me where I'm sitting. And uh, we're at platform 10, we're about to head off very shortly. Now just pulling out of platform 10. building the luggage room there. get out to the Wiltshire might make a movie here and there and in the lounge and the dining car or so along the way.
ticket check now and I'm heading up towards um, Cambodia, which is our first stop. A little while yet, but we're heading that way. Anyway, we're in the dining car, we're going to have some afternoon tea here shortly. So, a little, little bit of uh, scones and coffee, I guess. Let's see how many minutes? Two. Two. We're in the lounge and uh, we've got a tablet, the uh, computer. We've got movies and TV shows and entertainment on it for later tonight. Right now we've left the vulture and uh, heading north. And not only has he got honey, he gets first prize. He didn't tell you he gets first prize at the show. I've only got three of them. Three Yeah. Isn't it down near the border, Johnny? It's down there, down near the border ranges, isn't it? That uh, your honeybees? No, I oh, know, not down there now. Oh, oh I used to, yeah, yeah. 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 It washed away in the floods. Oh, 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 dear, oh dear. 2011 floods? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, January, yeah, yes. Yeah. Are they native bees? Oh, the train has arrived in Nambour and they said they're going to be here for 20 minutes but I won't be outside on the platform for 20 minutes, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, fairly warm sort of day too up here. And if we look across, we can see what used to be this is it, uh, the uh, sugar mill site, uh, which is now Coles, that's called uh, Nambour Mill Village and you see a bus there and there's a bit of artwork on the kids have put up there from the schools around the area and we look across and the train is sitting up here and the smokers will jump off and run outside and smoke out in the street and come back. Just looking towards the front of the train there, it's at Nambour still. Get a slow turn around, we come past the staff car. Then car A and car B where I'm situated. And I think I'm gonna jump back on board there, mate. Right? <laughs> well we've arrived in the Tucker Box dining car for we call the Tucker Box restaurant for uh, dinner. Our friend John Boyle is here and he's getting a bit of damper, it's the Australian food. It's a little bit busy in this dining car, but I just want to get a quick uh, view over the top if I can get away with this. Anyway, give you an idea of what it's like. Well, we've stopped uh, out near Emerald, I think. I don't think we're quite in the town. And electrified sightings, even though they don't use electric locomotives out here anymore. And uh, a lot of coal trains um, further back, Blackwater and towns like that, Dingo, Bluff, other little towns, um, back towards Rockhampton they have coal trains, but uh, right here we've got these sightings and uh, we're just sitting here for a moment, we might pass something shortly and uh, after a little while we'll go down and have breakfast. Well we're 
just arrived at Amber Station. We're not sure how long we're going to be here. We're going to get back on the train at the moment. There's the train itself. Oh, there we go. We're told to get back on. There we go. You see, that's not long, is it? That's not long. Well, we're in the, in the uh, Tucker Box restaurant, as they call it, the dining car. Just leaving Emerald now. <coughs> what one you got? I'll have a look and see what's on the menu. So, um, so we're heading out of town and um, just have a bit of breakfast. We're just in uh, Anarchy, it's only a small town. There's a lot of new sleepers there, I notice. So we're going to do up the line a little bit. Had our breakfast and um, must have made a stop, the passenger stop here, I suppose. It's only a very, as I say, quite a small town. It'd be hard to tell. I'd be lucky if there's probably a hundred people live here, I guess. Anyway, uh, we're heading along and uh, we're on jointed track as my friends in particular overseas would hear all the clack 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 all the way along the way. Fairly low sort of scrub country and uh, a few cattle around here and this is uh, to the west of Anarchy and heading towards Wild places like uh, Duncan Range and uh, eventually Barcaulder and so on now. Uh, it's uh, running, we're running quite late at one point there, about 50 minutes late. <coughs> People would sometimes describe this as pretty boring or un or, uh, uninteresting perhaps but it, I find it quite uh, interesting it's, it's uh, countryside is uh, as I said grasslands and scrub a lot of dry creek beds uh, for though my friends overseas we're on three foot six gauge here uh, and we all of Queensland three foot six and I'd like some of the British friends who might view this to tell me why the British seem to give, bequeath or whatever you like to call it, three foot six gauge to many parts of the world, including South Africa, Japan, the Philippines, <coughs> large areas of Australia. Uh, why did they do that? No, why didn't they, when they brought railways into some of these places, why didn't they have four foot eight and a half? Because by the time they did it, <coughs> standard gauge as we now call it, or what is also called Stevenson gauge, uh, was already well established. And of course uh, there's a story attached to a lot of that anyway, and I don't want to bore people, but uh, there was a royal commission into this sort of thing back in the uh, I guess the 1850s or so, 60s, and anyway, what happened was that um, Brunel had his broad gauge, which was seven foot and a quarter inch, and it was never taken advantage of. I mean, it could have been a very, you could have had some really big trains, and uh, you could imagine uh, trains that were <coughs> not quite double the size of the standard gauge, but you'd have some pretty good size. It was never taken advantage of. And it was decided to abolish the uh, broad gauge and go on to standard gauge, which in those days they used to call narrow gauge. So uh, four foot eight and a half is now found on about 60% of the railways of the world, so it's quite common. Now it's bouncing along here, and you can hear the short short rails, short uh, clickety clacks. Uh, but also, if there's too much vibration rather than the actual natural bouncing along of a train it's the fault of the camera which doesn't have a real good uh, stabilizing uh, mechanism I've had a lot of trouble with it, it's a Canon I've had this is the third version, I've had a lost one and I replaced it twice 
never been satisfied but I did try the other camera out which was a nice SLR camera but there were problems and uh, I regarded that best to go back onto this camera uh, because I had issues with starting and stopping the other camera and it, whether you know you push stop recording it didn't seem to indicate whether you stopped or not so I thought well I'll go back to the other camera anyway we'll get a little bit of the mountain ranges around the Drummond areas and uh, later and we also go through a little place called uh, Bogan Tungan which was a refreshment station in the old days and had a quite a large town there now it's just a it's a very small outpost with half a dozen houses and a pub and uh, the railway station still exists but it's not generally used um, and I assume a person could request a stop at Bogotung and be allowed to get off as you can see it's been largely cleared out here too and, uh, uh, can't see any cattle. This would be cattle type country though, would you? Now it's nine o'clock and we're just sort of getting into the hill country. Very slow at the moment. Don't know. I've got the lounge to myself, would you believe? And the second sitting in the breakfast is over. We are, my friend and I were on the first. See through to the uh, dining car there. And this is called the Shearer's Rest, this car. And the train is just going around the curve. I don't know if you can see that very well from here. See the locomotives. Not really well, admittedly, I must say. But uh, still, you can see them. Anyway. In other words, in real life, as it were, rather than on movies, you can't actually see it quite well. There's all the curves, and this is called the Drummond Range. Now, uh, I may have mentioned this in the past, or I tell my friends and people that I meet that uh, the best opportunity to ride this train, even though it's summer at the time, is what they call a two-for-one deal. And it runs from November through to March, and you get literally the two people for the one price. And it brings the fare right down. Now logically also you can get on a um, Qantas link, uh, Brisbane to Longreach. For argument's sake, you might fly out on the, on the Saturday, have two nights at Longreach, go to the uh, Stockman's Hall of Fame and the uh, Qantas Museum on the Sunday. Then on Monday you leave at 10 o'clock from uh, Longreach and you get back into Brisbane at about midday. Tuesday. As you can see we're just really clipping along at quite a low speed here. But it is a nice ride. Shaking along a little bit. Uh, bloody, to say rough, but you know. Looking outside, it's still like mountain, a little scrubby kind of country. And I returned my so-called tablet, that's the little device with the, uh, the movies and the TV shows, and I couldn't find anything I wanted, and I just stumble across uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, good old Beatles uh, album, and listen to that. Oh, it's nostalgic, brings back some memories from the 60s. Well, it's the uh, most popular record album ever, ever produced, I understand.
fairly sort of overcast. It doesn't look like it's going to rain, but it's nice and cool. And uh, it'll be quite reasonable out there this afternoon when we get out. This is um, Anarchy. Um, we're running a bit late, we're about 40 late. Now, there's a little town, and uh, we're going to have lunch. It's about 10 past 11 now. We're going to have lunch about quarter to 12. We'll have enough time to look around a little bit at uh, Barcaulin, the next main town telephone is yakking away it's sort of like one of those little messages where you ring up where it brings tells you about all you know calls you've missed or whatever it's yakking away at the moment in the background you might almost be able to hear it so there's the little town creeping out of here yeah, Anarchy Does it say Anarchy? Anarchy? Must be, yeah it says Anarchy I don't think it's Elf, I think it's it Anarchy That's right Anarchy of course it's got, uh, No this must be Alpha. Sorry, that could have been Alpha there too. Oh, sorry, I was in the train, part of the train where it just stopped and uh, wasn't at the station, so uh, I might correct myself in a moment, but I think that could be. Anyway, we're just pulling out now. Few little houses around there and fire and rescue alpha sorry I'm, i must correct myself it was alpha there you go uh, i don't know what the population would be a few hundred people that's all jericho is coming and bar calden are on the, this is the main highway we're traveling beside we're clicking along here very slowly as you can imagine There has been some back burning along here and a little bit of a fire control burn. So you got Jericho, Bar Call and Long Reach sign saying, you know. Oh, well, we're about to have lunch here. 
people are making their way in. Quite rowdy, of course, but it's one to expect. Uh, just arriving in Jericho. And they call it the Jordan, it's not a river, it's just a creek. So Jericho on the Jordan. I notice a sign back there, a light here for Blackhall and Eureka. <laughs> Those are the days. Ran non-stop. There we go. We ran non-stop through Jericho. Drovers Rest Cafe. There we go. You could buy a little house out here for next to nothing. <laughs> it's here. It's a little yellow house over there, look at that. <laughs> and we should see the actual start of the abandoned branch line to Yuraka right now. Here it goes, right here. There it is. That's what's left of it. I never got out there. Never made it. My mate uh, Kerry Whitfield got out there though. He'll see this. And uh, anyway, we're having a... Well, there's a couple of spots of rain on the window. And that's... Uh, Grasslands and scrub and everything out there, and there's some interesting looking plants in there. They're kind of a slightly yellowy brown colour. Well, I've been told that they're a cattle fodder. The cows actually, you know, you know the cattle actually eat that. There's been somewhat of a drought here, actually. So I hope to get out of Bar Corman for a few minutes and I hope it's not raining when we get to uh, Long Beach to the point where I can get up to the hotel and around, then later on around the town a little bit without getting wet too much. Yeah, it's funny I had an opportunity to bring an umbrella and didn't take it so there, there you go. Maybe I was being uh, super op optimistic. Well, we've arrived in Bar Corden and it's actually raining. I just I can't. I didn't bring Rumbrella with me. My, the name of my car is Hudson Fish, by the way. Sorry. And there's the rest of the train. And uh, I'm going to get out and have a quick look. But I've been here before, so. Um, make it really quick and jump on the train again. We're running a bit late, but we uh, should be said to be arriving in uh, Long Reach on time. It's the sitting cars here. Ah, oh, you would, uh, you wouldn't use those, I'm afraid. If you, some people do, I guess. Anyway, going to have a look outside for a second. There's the railway hotel, and uh, opposite the railway station, of course. And the people are out in droves, let's say. And, uh, this is the uh, so-called tree of knowledge, but anyway, 
Uh, it's dead. And the reason it's in an unusual sort of thing, by the way, it's an unusual, extremely unusual sort of a contraption around it. Uh, or installation or whatever I'll call it. Uh, the reason it is dead is because uh, during the time of Prime Minister Gillard the Labor government, somebody who hated her with great passion decided to poison the tree of knowledge that has been here since the Labor Party way before the Labour Party was formed in the 1890s and uh, they still put this contraption around this tree and kept it and uh, there's the front of the station I'm almost shivering here, this is so cold and I didn't bring a jacket oh my goodness and I didn't bring um, an umbrella would you believe There's a train standing at the platform in uh, Bark Corwin. The locals call the place Barky. And uh, we got all the, from the front sleeping car right through to the end of the train there. It's about a 10 car train. And as I was saying, it's relatively quite cool to a fairly almost cold um, and by the time we get there, it should be a quite reasonable day, actually it's not raining for the moment and hopefully it won't be raining when we get there uh, um, just, This is a little unusual in some respects here, it's because uh, in Queensland in particular let's say, a lot of the stations are not in the heart of towns, right, and this one is you look out there and there's people everywhere because um, most of the train gets out and then goes and have a look around the town and it's literally right in the centre of town here so it's pretty handy and long reaches is well it's pretty good it's right in the town but there are a lot of stations including Gympie and Maryborough that are not and Bowen and other places that are not in the heart of town but anyway I'll just grab this a little bit and then head off to the lounge car, I think, and get ready to go. This is a city car, so... I guess somebody has to ride in them. Um, I'm saying I wouldn't do it, but anyway, there they go, so... Or coach, as the Americans call it. Ah, uh, well, anyway, so... We're back in the lounge car, and uh, it's a bit. Wow, well, it's still a lot better than out there. So it's almost yeah, shivering, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it has cleared up. I think it has cleared up a fraction. Yeah. Uh, so it's a few minutes time. But it's like to see a tiny bit of sun right now too. So uh, there's like a sun shower going on out there, or well, there has been. Anyway, so we're running late, but we're going to ex expect it to be on time in uh, long reach I think there's a bit of padding on the timetable and it's a pretty cool day it's a bit unexpectedly cool today well we're about half an hour late so it's not too bad at all and the weather has changed and improved Blue skies over that side, more or less. And we should be into Long Reach around about 10 past 4. Basically, the stock is all the fame. Sight, put that way over there. You can't see it very well, but that's where it is.
can't even talk. One, I should say, by Richmond against the Adelaide Crows. So the football season is over as far as I'm concerned anyway. So worrying about this Cowboys and this Melbourne Storm and a teacup uh, today. I don't know anything about it. Anyway, we're nearly in the platform. A little wagon. Interesting little wagon, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. So it makes two stops. I think it's going to for luggage, and then it pulls up for the passengers. Quite, uh, quite a bright and sunny little afternoon here now. I was a bit worried earlier on that it might be raining. Motel. Well, people are getting off and out of the station. And, uh, most are on tours. Um, fair to say, you know, 80 or 90 percent of people on this train will be on tours. And they get met and they stay a few days and they come back on the train generally, on Thursday generally. Well, just outside the hotel motel, I'll give you a quick look around. Just looking down towards the station there, and uh, the Sonic Temple there. Yeah, Johnny reckons it was for sale. Now, this is the actual um, motel section where we're staying, and looking along the street, that's the hotel, and towards. Uh, you look down the street, you get to the main street. Uh, where all the shops and so on are. Just looking across there, there's the original uh, ticket office for uh, Qantas. It was correctly known as the Queensland Northern Territory Aerial Service. Now that was a long time ago. That would be the 1920s or 30s that they would have had to be running. The East to West uh, Bakery, that would be for breakfast tomorrow. And looking along the main street we've got um, all the shops and so on here. The population has gone down. It used to be about 5,000 now. I understand about 3,500 people living here. 
Well, it's Monday, 2nd of October, 2017. It's a public holiday today, and wouldn't you know it, I'm at Longreach, and there's the train sitting there quietly, but the power van's running, which is a bit unusual. And anyway, everything's shut, so the uh, bakery that I wanted to go to, which is it's all locked up, and it's on for sale, by the way. And I'll come back a bit later with my mate John, um, Boyle and we'll get on the train and we'll go towards uh, he's going to Rockhampton and I'm going to Brisbane well, We're at the back of uh, the Cobb and Co Museum which will be closed of course today anyway but look here's a genuine uh, Cobb and Co coach there's two of them and there's a little blue heeler he's real too I thought he was a model and the dog's out there tied up and uh, it's really like a scene out of the 1890s or something, and you think about it, there you go, there's the long reach, and there's Cobb and Co. by the way, was started by uh, Wells Fargo of America, it's the same as the stagecoaches over there. 